Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. As Miss Becky and um, Pastor Paul mentioned earlier, we are starting the series called Blessed. Actually, it's hashtag blessed. And I like uh, what Pastor Paul said in regards to the series and our why behind it. And that is that the world has really hijacked that term or that terminology, blessed. How often today are you hearing a lot of, a lot of high profilers, so to speak, talk about how blessed they are, how blessed they are. And so for, for a long time, I thought, well, they're just giving credit to God only to discover that's not always the case. Now, I'm not saying that everyone that says they're blessed um, is saying what I'm about to describe in regards to the blessing, the word blessing that they're connecting to the source. But more often than not, what I've realized is that when folks are saying blessed, they're not giving glory to God, they're giving glory to something or someone else outside of God. The universe, actually people today, it's, it's a very, very strong movement today very strong movement, it's called spiritualism, where people are, essentially what's happened is people have uh, taken God out of the picture in regards to being the source of being blessed and replaced it with the universe. It's prominent today, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, maybe it's not so much in the South and the Bible Belt, but, but you go in other areas of the United States, and I promise you, when you say blessed, more people are not gonna think about God. They're gonna think about the universe and how the universe has delivered blessings into your life. It just takes a little bit longer for stuff to soak into the Bible Belt. Can somebody say amen to that, right? But it, it's, 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 it's a movement, and, and, and I, I just, it, my eyes were really open to this uh, a few months ago, and I thought, you know, uh, I, the, the church needs to know for sure that, 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 that the God wants his kids blessed and doesn't, you, uh, doesn't use the universe in order to do it, because God's people have a direct connection to him, amen? They don't have to go through the created, they can go directly to the creator, can somebody say amen when it comes to his blessings? So that is the reason today, if you go to, uh, say you go to Instagram and you put in, you know, hashtag blessed, I promise you, you get well over a million, a million different hits or a million different messages of people being, being hashtag blessed. Got my new caddy. Hashtag what? Blessed. Got my new Kia. Come on, somebody for the Kia drivers too. What? Hashtag what? Blessed. Or I'm with my, I'm with my wife, my family. It's so good to be with my family. Or I'm with my boo. How many of you here got a boo? I, I got one. She's sitting right there on the front row. That's my boo. Her name's Sandy. Now I am hashtag blessed with my boo. I don't know about yours. I would say amen, men and ladies, if you got the boo thing going on. But hashtag, in other words, hashtag this or uh, paid off a big debt. Hashtag what? Blessed. And again, I'm not saying everybody that says blessed or connecting it to somebody other than God or something other than God, but it is a real movement. And I believe uh, that we need to, as a church, need to wake up and say, you know what? It is our God that blesses us. My God is not just my God, but he is my source for every single blessing, my dependency, listen, and my thanksgiving, my credit goes to God for my blessings. (laughs) And so I I wanna, I wanna, make sure that we are not, listen to me, um, we're not just narrowing our view of God's blessings. It's another part of the why. I wanna make sure that we're not narrowing our view of God's blessings just in just um, focusing on material things. We have to, if we are, we have to break out of that narrowness and break into all of God's blessings. Can I say that one more time? We've got to make sure if we, our focus and our attention is just on material things that come from God, that is a narrow version of, uh, of the view of the blessings that God has provided for, for his people. So we have to break out of that narrow view, listen to me, and we have to break into all of God's blessings for our lives. 
Now, before I dive into that, I, I got to take just a minute and talk about Jesus. How many loves to talk about Jesus? How many in this room are thankful for Jesus? Come on, somebody. Is anybody, maybe you're online, you're thankful for Jesus, and if you are, you ought to just type in the chat room right now, I'm so thankful for Jesus like a thousand million times. <laughs> I'm so thankful uh, for Jesus. But when Jesus stepped into time, you know, Jesus uh, exited a place where there is no time. He, the eternal, right? The unseen. He exited that and he stepped into time as we know it, but he also stepped into a space that we are currently on, that's the earth. And so when he did, Jesus accomplished three significant things, and this is so important that you understand this in regards to being blessed, okay? Three significant things that Jesus accomplished when he stepped into this time and this space that we are currently in, all right? And so the first thing that he did, and I, I want you to, I don't want you to hold back when I say the first thing that he accomplished, which is so, so important. So you gotta blow the roof off this place when I say this, all right? The first thing that he accomplished was this. Jesus paid for your sins. Can somebody say, thank God that Jesus paid for our sins? If, you, if you're not thankful for that, apparently you don't know what Jesus redeemed you from. If you're not thankful for being forgiven, you do not understand where you are at in regard, in comparison to where you are at today, where you were then to compare, comparative to where you are today. Because let me tell you something, before that you allowed Jesus into your life or Jesus allowed you into his life, listen, you were separate from God, you were all alone, you had no hope and you had no chance. But the moment that you received the forgiveness offered by his payment, let me tell you something, there was a change. You moved from the category of being owned by Satan, listen to this, but to, be the, but to the place of being owned by God. The Bible says that you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. The Bible says that old things have passed away and everything has become new. Why? Because you are forgiven. I, I just, I'm just amazed at how great God's love is. That he would give his only begotten son. It's not like he had 12 to choose from. And said, I'm gonna give you the lesser of the ones that I value the most. No, Jesus, God gave Jesus his only begotten son, listen to me, to pay for your sins. Hey, listen to me, that's something that I wouldn't do. If you came to me and you, you said, hey, Pastor John, listen, I need my sins forgiven. Would you give one of your kids for that? I'd say, no, forget it. I would especially turn you down when it came to my grandkids. I'm not, I'm not gonna give one of my grandkids to forgive your sins. If they were able to, I, I probably just couldn't do that. But God did. I said, but God did. God gave his only son. That's the reason we should be forever to be thankful, forever, daily. Father, thank you for forgiving me for my sins. Thank you that I'm not in the same category that I used to be, and I'm your child. I'm not helpless, I'm not hopeless. I am a child of the most high God. Jesus accomplished that by coming to this earth. Here's another thing that Jesus accomplished. He revealed, and this is so important. Jesus revealed God the Father. I don't know how many times I've said this over the years. Do not go to the Old Testament to understand what God is like. Don't go to the Old Testament. And I, I have had people when they said that, are you, they'll say, well, are you saying that God changed? No, God didn't change, watch this, but access to God changed. That's the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. God didn't change, but access to him changed. In other words, if, 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 if you don't have good access to somebody, you're not gonna clearly know what they're like. Are you following this? But if you have clear access to somebody, you can have a better view of what they're like. Are you following me? That is the reason it's important that you go to Jesus because it was Jesus that revealed the Father God. Can somebody say amen to that? Listen to what John 14, nine says. And Jesus said to him, uh, have I been with you so long that you have, um, and, and you, excuse me, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Watch this. He who has seen me has seen who? The what? So how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus was saying to, to, to Philip, listen, when you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father. 
If you want to understand, if you want to understand what God is like to the best of your ability with the help of the Holy Spirit, go and read the Gospels. Always start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John with the intent of understanding who your Father God is like. That is the genesis. That is the starting point to understanding who God is like. Because again, when Jesus came to the earth, he revealed who God the Father and what we, his character, his nature. He gave a very uh, a real or a tangible example, a very seen example or image of what the Father God is like. Listen to what is written in Colossians uh, chapter one, verses 13 and, uh, excuse me, Colossians chapter one, verse 15. It says, Christ is exactly like God. Doesn't get any plainer than that. <laughs> Christ is what? Christ is what? So access changed. God, God, before the cross, before Jesus entering into time and space that we're in, God, God was, was off limits to man. So, so, so humanity couldn't come to God, couldn't get to God, so God said, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send my son to pay for the sins, but also I'm gonna send my son so the world will know what I'm like. Access changed. So that's the reason you always start with Jesus if you don't want to know what God the Father is like. At the same time, he also revealed Jesus coming to the earth, revealed who your real enemy is. In John 10, 10, it says that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Stop right there. If you want to know what's going on in the world and the why behind what's going on in the world, I would start there. You want to trace COVID and what's going on with COVID and all these, this other craziness, all this other destruction in the world? I would start there not, and, and not blame it on God or say God is permitting this to happen. God's not checking off on this and saying it's okay for these things to happen. We're living, ladies and gentlemen, we're living on and in a cursed space. It's called the earth and the enemy is still working, and he's still stealing, he's still killing, and he's still destroying. Everybody listen to me, and it's not God's fault. As a matter of fact, it would be much worse if God's people weren't here. So here again, he said, the thief does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But listen to this next part. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more what? Abundantly. So Jesus said, all right, here's what the enemy's up to, but here's what I'm up to. Here's what the enemy's up to, but this is why I came. Here's another reason that Jesus uh, came to the earth. Jesus came to start a movement. Jesus came to start a movement. Everybody say movement. He came to start a movement. Uh, let me just refer to it this way, using a theological term, a term that's in the Bible. It's his kingdom. It's his kingdom. Jesus, when Jesus came to the earth, there was, a, um, there was already a system of worship in place. It's called the Old Covenant. And so Jesus didn't come to, do, to, to have or better that system or to have, uh, or to have Old Covenant 2.0. That's not why he came. Jesus came and he said, all right, that is ending, that form of worship, that style of worship, that approach to worship, that is ending, uh, ending because I am here to start a new movement. And that is the reason he talked about his kingdom all the time. His kingdom is his movement. Jesus came to start a what? A movement, but we call it the what? Kingdom. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. That movement is still happening. That movement is still taking place. That movement is still operational in the world today. Listen to me, and you are part of that movement. You say, well, I, I thought, I thought I'm, we're just the church. You are the church. We are the church. Hear this now. I'm gonna get a little deep here. How many deep sheep do we have in here? I'm people are like, oh man, I love it when the pastor goes deep. Sometimes it's like, uh, he went deep, and I didn't understand what he said, but it was deep, I can tell you, it was deep. <laughs> All right, so Jesus came to start this movement. It's the kingdom, but watch this. Here is what the movement looks like. It's found in Matthew 16, 18. I love this verse of scripture. I love this moment that Jesus 
talked about the future and his vision and his purpose. Because he's asked those who were following him about what people are saying about him and Peter gave the right answer. And I love this next statement what Jesus came back with. Talking about the movement, talking about the kingdom. Matthew 16, 18, he says, and, and, and I also say to you that you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church. Talking about movement, watch this. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Talking about the movement that Jesus started. So you're, you're probably thinking this right now, what well, is it kingdom, is it movement, or is it church? The church that Jesus was talking about. Yes. Yes, because listen to me, the church, which is not a place, the church is his people. Uh, we gotta get this. Everybody listen to this. God never intended for the church to be a place. That's what we've made it. But God, when God and Jesus initiated this movement that was his kingdom, that's also the church, he never intended for it to be a place. He intended for it to be a movement of people that accomplished his purpose in the earth. Listen to me. The church is not a place. It's not a building. It is a lifestyle. It is us, God's people, that are part of this movement called his kingdom. Can somebody say amen to that? And you, you've got to understand this, watch this, in order to understand the, the depth or the importance of God's blessings and not living in the narrowness of just material blessings, but opening it up to all of God's blessings for all of your life. Amen. Are you following that? Because when you make that connection, hashtag blessed by God, part of his purpose, your life will never be the same. Can I have a better amen than that? So he destined, listen to me, God destined that his church never be a place, but he destined it, he destined it to be people that he partnered with in order to accomplish his purpose. I'm gonna wrap all this part of it up. Jesus came to start a movement. It's called his kingdom, watch this, and the church, God's people are the face of, it's the visible part of his kingdom in the earth. It's a partnership that God established. As a matter of fact, this is nothing new. As a matter of fact, it, it kind of got, looked like it kind of got derailed in the very beginning, but God has always partnered with people and connected his blessings with the partnership of the people accomplishing his purpose. And I can take you back to Genesis and show you this. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter one, God set the precedent for what I'm talking about. Genesis chapter one, verse 28, God had created Adam, God created Eve. Everything was going great. Watch this, Genesis chapter one, verse 28. And it says, then God what? God what? God did what? Hashtag blessed. In that moment, back in the day, in the garden, if we would have had Instagram, Adam and Eve, hashtag blessed by God. Are you following this? So he, he blessed, he blessed, he blessed, but listen to me, it was more than just blessing his creation. He was actually blessing individuals to partner with him in regards to his purpose for them in the earth. Because watch this. It says that then God blessed them, watch this, watch this, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves. So God blessed them and said, now I'm giving you something to do. God blessed them and said, now here's my purpose for you. God blessed them, hashtag blessed, and then said, here's my assignment for you. Listen, from the very beginning, God has tethered his blessings and his purpose. God has placed his blessings in the hands and in the lives of those who were connected to his purpose. 
That is the reason I'm convinced that the church in the church today, we've just got a small taste of God's blessings. God, just a small taste. But God's wanting us to move out of that smallness of blessings into the vastness of blessings that he has created for us to live in for the sake of accomplishing his purpose. So let me talk a little bit to you for a few moments now. That was just my warm up. That was my introduction. Let me talk to you just for a few moments about how God made you, about how God created you. God created you spirit, soul, and body, watch this, and has provided abundant blessings for each. God has created us spirit, everybody say spirit. Everybody say this with me. Don't freak out when I say this, okay? Everybody say this with me. Say, I am a spirit being. I am a spirit being. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's weird. No, it's in the Bible. Amen. All right? Everybody say this with me. Say, I have a soul. Because that's the truth about you. Say this with me. Say, I'm living in a body. And God has provided blessings for each. Let me say it another way. There's the tangible part of us, that's the outer part, that's the body. And then there's the intangible part of us, that's the inner man. There's the tangible part, listen to me, and the tangible part, our body, that's the outer part, it has to do, it has to do with our contact in our environment. The environment that you're living in, you contact the environment that you live in, listen to me, with the tangible part of you, with your body. We, 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 we shake hands with each other, right? What are we doing? We're greeting each other with the tangible part of us. We, we pull up to the, to the restaurant and we order what? We order some food, why? Because th that's how we come in contact with what? The, the, the tangible part of us, that's our body. But the most important part of us is really the intangible part of us, that's the part that is unseen, that's the inside of us. And the reason I say it's the most important part of us is that's the part that's most like God. Now, now we, we, we get hung up on this, this the, 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 we get those confused sometimes. But everybody listen to me. The outside of you is not what makes you the most like God. Yeah. Why? Because it's not eternal. That's good. It's not eternal. God is eternal. Are you following me? God is eternal. God created us, he created all of us, but he created the inside of us, our soul and our inner man, our spirit, the intangible part of us is most like him. That's the part that lives forever. It's the most like God. Can I have a better amen than that? I'll, I'll, I'll explain, I'll give this, this bit of analogy. And I don't, I don't mean this to be morbid or whatever, but uh, several years ago when we were living out West, there was a, a church member of ours that was tragically killed in a car accident. Wasn't in town, it was out, out of town. And, and I got the phone call because uh, we had some highway patrolmen that went to church and, uh, excuse me, went to church. And of course he knew her, the one that worked the wreck that was ways away from um, where we were living at. He, he worked the wreck and, and so uh, we realized that her, her, her mom, which is happening to our next door neighbor, uh, was, was in Europe on this excursion. She was on this vacation. And, and so um, uh, the, 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 the highway patrolman, number one, called and asked, hey, Pastor John, can you notify the mom and let the mom know? And I said, sure. You know, that's just part of pastoring sometimes. You, you share those things that are very difficult. And, and so, uh, so then a couple days later, uh, the highway patrolman reached back out to me and said, hey, Pastor John, we need somebody to identify the body. I didn't say, oh, glory. <laughs> but I said, you know, Pastor John, would you do that? Since you knew her so well, absolutely I will. And this is a horrific accident, right? So the highway patrolman uh, pulled up in front of my house and I went and got in. My neighbors are probably thinking, oh, what has Pastor John done now? The, here's the highway patrol, right? There's... So I jump in the car and we, we, we drive, up to, drive up to another city, go into the morgue. And, and so I walk into the morgue, the area where the body was at. And they unzipped the body bag and, and, and you, you, could, you know, I could see about from here up of the young lady and that's all I needed for identification. I identified her as she really was in, in truth, it was her. And, and so I got back and, and uh, of course our staff knew about what was going on. So our youth pastor said, Pastor John, how did you process that? I mean, it's a body. 
And I said, Here, here's how I process that. I called her name. Let's say her name was Sue. It wasn't Sue. I said, what I was looking at was not Sue. That's how I processed it. That's not Sue. The moment Sue took her last breath, and it was because of that accident not long ago, Sue's not there. That's just Sue's body. That's Sue's tabernacle. That's, 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 what, that's what she just stayed in. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Sue is in heaven. That's how that didn't bother me. Are you following me? Because the, the part of Sue that's with God is eternal. Her inner man, the intangible part, it's with God. She's with what? God. The Bible says our outer part is going to get old. And I know you younger folks are like, oh, that ain't going to happen to me. I'm, I'll be 55 in just a couple of days. I'm telling you, it can happen. And things start shifting. You got this moving disease. I mean, stuff starts moving different places in your body. I'm not talking. <laughs> stuff be here. Used to as a young man. I mean, it just shifts. Goes like right around here. Just moves. I don't know what happens. <laughs> this happens. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible says the inner man can be renewed and get stronger day by day by day. Can somebody understand what I'm saying about the outer man and the inner man? And God has provided blessings for every single, every single area of our life. So let me give you an example, the body. We're, we're blessed in our body or for the sake of our body. I love Deuteronomy uh, uh, chapter 28, verses three through eight. It says, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Can somebody say, thank God that we can be blessed physically wherever we are? I like this next one. The fruit of your womb will be what? and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Verse five, that your basket and your kneading uh, trough will be what? And you'll be able to cook good. And there'll always be something there to cook. All right? Watch verse six. You will be what? When you come in and what? What's that talking about? That's talking about the tangible blessings. If I'm going in or out, I believe I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. Not just blessed, but blessed by who? Hashtag blessed by God. Matter of fact, I think we need to stop just saying blessed and start saying blessed by what? By who? By God. Quit saying blessed. Some people misinterpret that and say, no, I'm blessed by God. Yes. How you doing today? I'm blessed by God. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you in one direction, but will flee from you in seven. That's a blessing, right? The Lord will send a blessing on your barns. Or we could say, can we say this, our storage areas? I'm talking about our closets. What about our accounts? The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything that you put your what? Hand to. The Lord will bless you in the land that he is giving you. Listen to me. My point is this, is that the outer part of us, God has provided blessings for that. But listen to me. There is so much more than that. Because the Bible says we're also blessed in our spirit. There are those spiritual blessings, which are the most valuable, the most important. Ephesians 1, 3 says, all praise to God. Watch this, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who has blessed us with every, 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 has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. I am barely able to contain myself right now. Because we've been blessed, already been blessed, has been blessed. God's not going to bless me one day with every, I don't have to talk him into it. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. And some of you got excited about the bank accounts. You ought to be excited about this. Some of you got blessed about being in the street, blessed, and in the city, in the country, and the, all these different places, blessed. You ought to get excited about that because you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. God didn't leave one thing out when it came to blessing you spiritually. Not one. I'm sorry to get excited, but I, it just happens. Let me give you a couple examples. I'm going to do my best to work through this as quickly as I can. Give you a couple examples about spiritual blessings. Number one, you're justified. 
You're justified. Romans chapter three says that we've been justified by faith through grace. We've been what? Some of you are like, I don't even know what that means. I'll give you an easy understanding of that. You following this? Justified means that God sees you when you accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Everybody listen to this. This is a spiritual blessing that he sees you, watch this, he sees you as if you never sinned before. Oh, that can't be true. It's true because it's in the Bible. That's the reason I cringe when I hear people say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Oh, please don't do that to me. I'm just an old sinner what, saved by what? It's impossible. If you're saved by grace, you can't be an old sinner. I said, if you're saved by grace, you can't be an old sinner. Because if you're saved by grace, you've been justified. Therefore, God doesn't see you as an old sinner anymore. He sees you just as though you've never sinned before. If we just got that one thing a lot, just that one thing right there, that one spiritual blessing, I'm telling you, the devil would have a bad time on his hands. Because listen to me, this is what happens. When you understand that you're justified by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus, that it, it will shut the mouth of the enemy. The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You want to shut the enemy up in regards to your past? All you have to say is, no, 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 no. I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Satan, let me remind you of one of them. One of them is that I have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I, God, when God sees me, he doesn't see my past. He sees his child that's been born of God, created in his image. Can somebody get a better amen than that? Amen. Listen, for some people, the enemy has been at your table too long. He's been at your table too long. You, you need to tell him to get up from my table because the Bible says that I'm seated with God and he sits with me at this table and I'm not gonna let the enemy lie to me anymore. Get up from my table because I am justified. I live my life just as though I've never sinned before. Man. I could keep going, but I can't. Let me give you another spiritual blessing. It's, it's you have access to God. You have access to God. You don't have to go through a man. You don't have to go through a building. You don't have to go through anything. The Bible in Hebrews uh, chapter, Hebrews chapter four says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us come what? Boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You say, Pastor John, what kind of spiritual blessing is that? That is this, that God through the death, burial and resurrection and your faith in the death, burial and resurrection resurrection, God has given you open access 24 seven that anytime you need to come to God, you need the grace for the moment that you messed up, that you can come with boldness and confidence and say, God, I'm here because I need your grace right now. I need your strength right now. That access is available to you at any point and at any time. That's a spiritual blessing. Unfettered access for his people. What about righteousness? That's another one. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, for he who knew no sin became sin for us that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You say, pastor, what does that mean? That, that's a spiritual blessing. That's one of the spiritual blessings that God has given us. What does it mean to be righteous? Well, if you're justified and God sees you as though you have never sinned before, then that mean God, means God can't reject you. which righteousness has to do with rejection. Listen to me, God cannot reject you. God cannot reject you. He cannot turn his back on you and say, you are no longer my child. Why? because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How did that happen? Because Jesus hung on the cross for you to become sin for you. God pushed him away, why? Because God knew in the future for everybody that put their faith in Jesus Christ, God would embrace them and love them into his kingdom and see his purpose come to pass in their life when they obeyed him and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
And I'm going to tell you, one of the biggest problems that people have today is dealing with rejection. But listen, when you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and people reject you, you're, you're, it doesn't sting always as much because you can always step back and go, you may reject me, but I know that my God doesn't. And let, let me just say this about rejection. Sometimes, sometimes rejection is actually God's protection. How many of you in high school, you, when you were in high school, you were like, you, you see that guy or that girl, you're like, oh my gosh, they're perfect. I just want to spend the rest of my life with them. They're so amazing, they're so beautiful, they're so great. God, please, I want to I wanna meet them and I want to court them and I want to marry them and we just live happily ever after. And then they turned you down. If you even took the shot, so to speak. And just crushed by that, but, but only to discover like 20 years later at a class reunion and you see the same person and you're like, dear God, thank you for not answering. Thank you for protecting me. You know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes God, God just worked that out for you. I'm telling you, you ought to thank you. You ought to get on your face and thank God that he did not answer that prayer because there are times where rejection actually can be God's what, but he will not reject you. If he could, that means your deal is bigger than the blood of Jesus. Nothing's, nothing is bigger and greater than the blood of Jesus. I'm gonna wrap up with this one. That God has also blessed us in our bodies, we've talked about that. As God has blessed us and we cut that way short on the spiritual blessings, we could write, there are books that have written. I could spend the rest of eternity, which we probably will, talking about the spiritual blessings. But God has also blessed us and provided blessings for our soul. Our soul. The soul that is part of our inner man, is part of the intangible part of us. And it's the seat of our, listen to me, it's the seat of our emotions and a lot of times when we've taught this, we just stop there, it's the seat of our emotions, but it's not. It's also the seat of our judgment. It's the seat of our emotions, but it's also the seat of our judgment. The word judgment seen simply means the way that you judge things, the way that you see things, the way that you choose, the way that you decide. But it's also the seat of our emotions. It's the, that we all have, that we all experience. But I'm gonna talk to you just for a moment about one that is so important, a blessing to our soul. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, don't worry about anything. That's a word for somebody right now. Worrying is not doing you any good. It's actually robbing you of what God desires for you to have and for you to experience. So don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. It's a good segue for, hey, prayer tomorrow night here at 6.30, be here. We're also getting ready, talking about the soul. We're also, this next series, very excited about it. It's called Headspace. Headspace. We're gonna be talking a lot about the soul of humanity and have, how to have a healthy soul in a chaotic world. How to have a healthy soul in a sick world. It's gonna be great. You do not, you wanna invite people, you hear more about that. Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience, watch this, God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace, watch this, will guard your heart and your minds as you live in where, where Christ Jesus. You see, when I said the word peace there, it's possible that you translated in your mind convenience or comfort or preference for what you think is best. But that's not always what peace is. Th th this, peace that, this peace that Paul writes about that really is a blessing for our soul. This peace that, that he's speaking of there, he says it exceeds anything that you can actually understand. But, but it, it, it's something that it comes into our soul and it is absolutely not dependent on circumstances that are around us. It's something that comes into our soul. It's a blessing that comes into our soul. That though there's, we're standing in chaos, there's this 
comfort that comes into our soul. When, when things don't look good or you've heard a negative or a bad report, there's this peace that I'm talking about, it comes in, it's a blessing from God that comes in and invades our soul. And it's this sense of, you know what, God's got this. It's this peace that passes all understanding. Listen to me, that doesn't come from the earth because it comes from God. It's not of the earth. It's not on this planet. You can't find it. You can't go get it. You can only step into it and allow Jesus and the Holy Spirit to do something in your soul that affects, watch this, your judgment, the way that you see things, the way that you respond to those things, the emotions that come with that. It invades your soul, and I'm telling you, everybody listen to me. Listen, please hear this. It affects you on the outside. And people look around you, and they're like, what's up with you? Do you not see what I said? Did you not hear what I heard? <laughs> yeah, I heard. Hashtag blessed by God. Because I got peace in my soul. I got peace in my soul. I'm gonna finish up with a story. I might have told this before, I don't remember. But Sandy and I were over in the Dallas area um, a few years ago, and actually we've been back since then, but we were just hanging out, do a little shopping. So I said, well, where do you wanna go shopping? She said, I'm, I wanna to go to Ikea. Ikea, I-K-E-A. I was aware of what Ikea was, and I said, well, let's go. Man, Google it thing, let's, let's head over there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, a couple hours max. Pull up in front of Ikea over in Dallas. I look at this building. I didn't know how big it was. Massive. I did Google it, 300,000 square feet of stuff and when I saw the size of this building I thought there ain't no way we're gonna get out of here in two hours it ain't gonna happen I'm just happy to be with my hashtag boo so we, we get out of the vehicle we walk inside it's really set up pretty cool there was someone there to greet us they said this is your first time back here I said yes it is and I love what they said I love this she pointed behind her. There were these two lines that started to the rest of the facility. Two lines probably 10 feet apart. She said this, they just kept going. She said, stay on the path until you get to the end. Stay on the path until you get to the end. So we started down the path. We're just going down the path. Everything's going great. Everything's going good. Going through different places. I mean, it is set up really, really cool. I, actually, I was pretty impressed by it. Didn't admit it, but I was pretty impressed by it. So we were going through it and we were just going. So we're adding some stuff. And then we realized I had forgotten something. I had forgotten the cart. Actually, Sandy realized we had forgotten the cart. And we'd maxed out our capacity to carry stuff. So Sandy said, John, go back and get, the, get, get a cart. I said, sweetheart, the lady said, stay on the path until we get to the end. I can't go backwards. That's just not. She said, John, go get a cart. So I went and got a cart. And so, so we're, 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 we're pushing the cart because we've got carts, so that's more room for white stuff. So we're going through Ikea, down the path, going down the path. And we're just throwing stuff in, throwing stuff in. And uh, I was beginning to wonder, do I need to go back and get another cart? But thankfully that I didn't. We, we made it until the end to where we checked out. So we checked out, and I began to think about that. I began to think about that experience. I thought about it a lot. We've actually been back. And I thought about that. I thought, you know, that's a lot like our walk with God. That God's got this path, it's his purpose, it's the movement that we're a part of. And he's just called us to stay on that path. And all along the way, watch this, all along the way, he's got these blessings for our body. He's got these spiritual blessings and he's got these blessings for our soul and he just keeps putting them in and putting them in, putting them in. And the purpose of the blessings really are to help us get down the path. And, and, but listen to me, until we get to the end, and someone said, well, where's the end? Is the end when we pass on? No, that's not the end. 
The end is what happens after we pass. Miss Becky mentioned it a moment ago. David, we stand before Jesus. And he said, well done. You good and you what? What? That compliment, that moment's not come just because we got a bunch of stuff, but we used the blessings that God has given us on the path as part of the movement to affect other people for the kingdom so that others will join us in eternity. Everybody listen to me. That's what the blessings are for. For the body, for the spirit, for the soul. It's just not for us. Father, we come to you right now in Jesus' name and we pray, God, that you help us understand this. We can't grasp all this. It's just so big. It's too big for us to get this on our own. We depend on the Holy Spirit to help us right now. Not only now, but just through the, over these 21 days, let this seep so deep into our spirits. Let this seep so deep into our soul that we are blessed in every area, but we use these blessings as leverage for your purpose in your kingdom as we stay on the path so that the day will come when we stand before you and you judge us as faithful you judge us as servants because that's what we did with our life and that's how we use the blessings that you gave us faithful with the blessings Help us grasp this by the help of the Holy Spirit. I need everybody, please, for just one more moment. Keep your head down, please. Uh, this, is, uh, this has got to be private, real private right now. If you're here in this room and you've walked away from God and your relationship with God is not where it needs to be, please, I'm going to say this very strongly. You've got to stop playing the game now. You're in a dangerous place right now. And I mean this. I've never said this like this at this church. I mean this. You got to quit playing the game. You got to quit playing the game. And you got to get real with Jesus. And you got to get real with God's plan for your life. Maybe you're online. I'm not going to ask you to come up to the front. I might should, but I'm not. I'm going to let this between be you and the Lord, between you two. But if you're here this morning, we're going to pray a prayer. And it's so much more, so much bigger than just this little thing we do before we dismiss. It's a prayer of repentance and it's a prayer of dedication and it's a prayer of asking forgiveness. And we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to pray this. But if you are running from God and you are not where you need to be with your relationship, I'm telling you right now, I know this by the Holy Spirit, that it's a, it's, you, you, you're, you're playing a dangerous game. You need God's protection. You need him. So if you're here and you say, Pastor John, nobody's looking around. When we pray that prayer, I'm going to mean it because I'm coming back to God. I'm I'm through with games. Raise your hand right now and say, yep, that's me. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you to my right. Thank you. I see you in the back. Online, you're a part of this. Life United, we got to pray this. We got to do this. And we've, we've always taken it seriously, but this is serious right now. This is serious. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Father, for my sins. I believe that Jesus died. And he died for me. I believe that his death was my payment for my sins. Father, I'm through playing around. I'm committed. I humble myself. I'm all in with you and for you and not for myself anymore. Thank you, Father, for my relationship with you. In Jesus' name, everybody that agrees, this is a great big. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.